has been doing. Amen. One more time, I want us to lift up our voices to God and appreciate the great and mighty God, the God that makes miracles happen, the God that the Bible says that he, he, he moves in the heavens in our help. Father, we worship and we give you glory and praise. Thank you, Father, for tonight. Blessed be your holy name. We honor you. We honor you. We magnify your name. We come before you, O Lord, tonight, O Lord, to give you glory, to give you praise for doing great and mighty things. I appreciate him for the personal programs. I appreciate him for his mercies that he has shown us. I appreciate him for miracles. I appreciate him for testimonies springing forth, things that he has done. Father, we worship you. We give you glory and praise. Thank you, Father, for this garden in your presence tonight. Thank you, Father, because you will do great and mighty things. We worship and we give you praise. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to let you know that we are in for a glorious time this evening. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. Very quickly, we're going to be praying our, um, our prayer meet, our Victory Month prayer meeting. Prayer prayers, yes. We're going to be praying that very quickly before we switch into the snow prayers. We thank God for what the Lord has started to do among us this morning. We bless God for how mightily, how great he has started with us. All right, so very quickly we're going to be praying. The focus for today is, Lord, settle all our matured singles maritally and divinely, and divinely, and divinely solved all family-related problems. Settle all our matured singles maritally and divinely solve all family-related problems. The book of Psalms chapter 34 verse 19 is a very popular passage that we all know about. It says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. For what? But the Lord delivered them. He delivers them from them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. This is a consolation for us, people of God. Many are the afflictions. You may wonder why some things happen to you and does not happen to your unbelieving colleague. The Bible said that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them not from few, not from some. The Bible said that God delivers them from them all. Psalm 71 verse 14 says, But I will hope continually and praise and will praise you yet more and more. Our God is bigger than challenges facing our matured youth and families. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Psalm 34 verse 19, But the Lord delivers him from them all. Some of the challenges are delay in career success, joblessness, and getting old without marriage or poor health situation. Joseph was a case study of God's faithfulness. He was a matured youth. Instead of getting ready for wedding, he was sold to another land. Instead of promotion for his faithfulness, he was imprisoned. But the day Joseph's glorification came. God intervened, and within an hour, Joseph was settled. That same God will do it again. Amen. All we need to do is just to trust and patiently wait for him. You know, we are in the kind, we are in the age where we want things to, to move very, very fast. We have fast food, we have microwave that can, instead of you Heating things, you know, properly, you have to go to the microwave, and that is fast, and that is good. But the way all of these things are emerging, things are moving at fast pace, so also, we are also losing patience. We want things to be done like this. God, I'm 20-something. I don't have somebody yet. I'm not married yet, and different things. God, I went to school, I did well, but I don't have a job yet. We just want things to happen and happen. And yes, there are people that are not even up to, that are not as, um, you know, up to our age, and these things are happening for them. But you see, there are things that God does in order to be able to try our spirit, to try us, really. There are some people that, for example, an unbelieving lady 
can say, I need $20,000. And he looked around. He went to daddy. Daddy said, oh, where do you want me to get it from? He went to mommy. Mommy said, oh, where do you want me to get it from? And, you know, just press one or two buttons, you know, and they link, link, link you up, you know, with someone somewhere. And he said, oh, okay, can you do this? And when you do that, you know, the money is no problem. But today we need people like Joe, people that will say that even if he slays me, I will wait on him. That I don't have any other choice. I don't have any, I don't have any other hope anywhere. God, you are my only hope. And you know that if you would not help me, you know I'm done for. So that is what God wants to be able to, wants to, be able to see in us. He wants to be sure that, yes, you really, in, you, you, that, 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 that you trust him. One of the things that humbles me sometimes is that when your kids, they, they misbehave and you, and you discipline them. When you discipline them, yes, they may cry, but they will still come back to you. They don't have any other place, you know, that they're going. And you know that it's coming from a very sincere and genuine heart. And you even feel bad, you know, for doing what you did. <laughs> you know, so God wants, his, God, wants his, God wants a situation where we'll be able to trust him. Don't say, God, if you can't do this for me, then I have options. If you can't do this for me, I know who will help me. If you still think, and there is something, the, the, the way God works is that if you think that you have options... He will wait. He will fold his hands until you have exhausted all your options. Uh, exhausted all your options, then you now come back to him and say, God, I'm sorry. But at that time, it may even be late. Some, so many things will have, got, will, have, will have gone wrong. Let's make God our first resort. Let's, 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 let's go to him. Anything that we're trusting, we know that God never, never fails. Amen. So all the people that were settled by God patiently waited for him. They did not weary themselves to the extent of losing hope. Our answer is at close range. Whatever battles, uh, 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 whatever battle requires, whatever the battle requires, God is up to the task. And we're, we're, I want to encourage you this, this, morning, this evening that... When you read that, when you read the scriptures, you will know that there have been issues, situations that even man could not help, but Jesus came through. The Bible mentioned about that man that went to meet Jesus, said, my daughter is dying, please help me. And while he was talking to Jesus, somebody came from his house and said, your daughter is dead. And Jesus said, only believe. He said, don't worry, the master. He said, even God, even Jesus cannot do anything about this issue. But Jesus just looked at him and he said, if only you believe. Don't, don't, don't allow your heart to be troubled. Think about the people of Israel. Pharaoh believed that he made a mistake for allowing them to go. And he went back. And the Red Sea was right in front of them. Pharaoh was behind them. And God made a way where there was no way. God, God is still in the business of making ways where there is no way. And let us be encouraged by that scripture. Say, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them from them all. If those afflictions, if they were, if they, if they had the capacity to be able to destroy you, even when you were not this strong, you had problems, and God delivered you. Even when you were even sinners, when you had not even come to Christ. The devil could not kill you then. He could not destroy you then. Is it now that you are now in the presence of God? That you are now is that you are now is. That is is it is it is it that time that the devil is going to come? No. Let's rise on our feet as we pray very quickly. I want us to pray that God Almighty have pardon, uh, God pardon and forgive all our shortcomings that can disturb our prayers in the precious name of Jesus. Let's lift up our voices and begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask, O Lord, that you pardon and forgive all our shortcomings that can disturb our prayers in the precious name of Jesus. Pardon, pardon, pardon. Father, we ask that you pardon and forgive all our shortcomings in the precious name of Jesus. Let's pray, blood of Jesus, liberate and set our brothers and sisters experiencing delay maritally free in the precious name of Jesus. 
liberate and set our brothers and sisters experiencing delay in the precious name of Jesus. Break the stronghold of delay in the precious name of Jesus. Your word says that none shall lack his mate, my father and my God. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you bring them, O oh Lord, into who you have prepared, who you have proposed for them in the precious name of Jesus. We ask, O oh Father, that you come true in Jesus' name. Let's pray that every power that blocks good employment to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Please don't take these prayers lightly. God is answering. God is hearing. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we break every power, every power that is blocking good employment, gainful employment, in the precious name of Jesus. Every family cause that may be in operation, we command you to stop in the precious name of Jesus. We pull down all your powers, everything that you have put in place. To bring, uh, to bring about delay, to bring about gainful employment, we, bring, we, we pull you down. We command the fire of the Holy Ghost to destroy everything that has been put in place. Everything blown into the air, everything thrown in the sea, anything buried on the ground, anything hung on the tree, anything suspended anywhere. In the precious name of Jesus, fire of the Holy Ghost, locate them and destroy them right now. In the precious name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's say every pronounce, pronunciation of evil, res, evil, responsible, responsible for the delay in all of our members' marriages to be crushed in the mighty name of Jesus. Every pronouncement of evil, responsible for the delay in all of our members' marriages in the name of Jesus, we command you to be crushed. We command you to be crushed. We command you to be destroyed. In the precious name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever stands as barrier or blanket. Shielding, shielding them from their partners. Holy Ghost fire consume them in the mighty name of Jesus. As many O oh Lord of our CG members. That are of marriageable ages O oh Lord. And are yet to be married. Whatever may be the cause. Father what Lord. Holy Ghost fire. Go after such and consume them right now in the precious name of Jesus. Consume them in the mighty name of Jesus. Their suitors will locate them speedily. Let their suitors locate them speedily in the precious name of Jesus. Let their suitors, O oh Lord, locate them speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it locate them speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Ma pre che punto se te ri pre che pique te ri ara va sanda de pre che bo sho fotori pre che vita za patori pre che mente ri pre che puzo to ye fre che manda ri pre che puzo soto ri ki ara va in the name of Jesus this year shall be wedding galore all over government in the name of Jesus starting with us of change in the precious name of Jesus Father Lord God we pray open heaven so Lord. Lord, for weddings in the mighty name of Jesus, in the Gospel Federation International, starting with us of change in the precious name of Jesus, wedding galore, in every angle, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, do it for us in the precious name of Jesus. Do it for us in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. We're going to pray number nine, that the power of God will liberate every home experiencing diverse sicknesses, no matter how terrible they may be. We're going to pray that God Almighty will heal in the precious name of Jesus. Let's pray that Jesus, Jesus will visit everyone, every home where there is any form of sickness in the name of Jesus. We read in the scriptures that Jesus visited the house of Peter and his mother-in-law was sick with fever. And the fever was so strong that, he, that she could not even stand up. But Jesus went to her, laid hands on her, and she was healed. And the same person cooked food for them. The Bible says that, the person, that, that, same, that same mama served them. They were, I believe there were young ladies in the house, so at least they were, the Peter's wife would be younger than the mama, right? <laughs> but you know what happened? She was so strong to the extent that she was like, yes, 
God has done something great. And I'm even stronger than all you guys that call yourself young ladies. <laughs> and she was able to do it. Why? Because she received supernatural strength. Let's pray for divine visitation in the homes of everyone. Everyone that is sick in, the, in, in our church, in, in the Gospel of Mission International. Let's pray in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh Lord. Yes, Father, Lord God, you ask me that you will them in the blood, in the precious name of Jesus. Father, I pray them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me tell you that you will not be able to do it. Spirit of lack and poverty, depart from all families in the mighty name of Jesus. Depart from all families in Jesus' name. Depart from all families in the precious name of Jesus. Let's pray that the God of permanent solution will give permanent solution to all our family problems in the precious name of Jesus. You God of permanent solution in the name of Jesus. Your word says whatsoever you do stands forever. Nothing can be put to it and nothing can be taken away from it. You do it so that men will fear you. Father, we ask, O oh Lord God, that you do a complete work, a total work in the lives, O oh Lord God, in, the, in all families represented in Gospel Faith Mission International House of Change, in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name and we give you glory. Father, we decree right now in the name of Jesus that every problem in every problem, hold, every power holding down our, our, our CG members of marriageable ages will command such problems to be destroyed right now in the precious name of Jesus. We decree victory in every area, in every family, in every life represented in Gospel Federation International House of Change in the precious name of Jesus. And we decree right now that every assembly having different forms of issues, we decree in the name of Jesus, permanent solution to those issues in the precious name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, we pray, O oh Lord, that you give us victory in every area of our challenges, in every area of our situation, of our problems, in the precious name of Jesus. Father, give government victory and set to us worldwide, set to us nationally, regionally, district-wise, and in all zones, in the precious name of Jesus. And Father, we pray that by your mercy and by your favor, government, O oh Lord, will rise to, your, to greatness in the precious name of Jesus. We give you all the glory and praise. Thank you, Father, Lord God, because our testimonies are here. We honor and we magnify your name. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. We're going to be praying for, we're going to be praying. Let's pray. Father, we honor you. Thank you, Father. We worship and we give you glory. Father, tonight, we ask, Lord, like never before among us, we ask, oh Lord, that you move. Let the heavens be open, oh Lord. Pour down your power, pour down your, your anointing, your presence upon us. We give you all praise. Thank you, Father, for new things. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to snow. Welcome to snow. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Welcome to snow. Very quickly, we're going to be praying. Very quickly, we are going to be praying. The theme of snow is what? Fresh oil. The theme of snow is what? Fresh oil. I want you to please open your Bibles with me to the book of um, Psalms chapter 92 verse 10. Psalms 92 verse 10. Can we read it together? Let's go. Say, but my own, you 
have exalted like a white ox. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Say, but my own you have exalted like a white ox. Say, my own you have exalted like a unicorn. And I shall be anointed with what? With fresh oil. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful, Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Lord, you are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, God, as we honor you. Oh, you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh, Lord. Yeah, you are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Psalm 92 again. He, say, he says that, but my own, you have exalted like a unicorn. He said, I have been anointed with fresh oil. People of God, this is the snow of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you talk about oil, you're talking about God's presence. You're talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the essence of fresh oil is not for any other thing but for impact. Somebody say impact. impact. God wants you to be a person of impact. You agree with me that to be a good fisherman, what do you need? You need skill, right? But for what Jesus promised, Jesus said that I will make you a fisher of men. And for you to be a fisher of men, you need anointing. In every other practice of life, we have nurses, we have doctors, we have IT gurus, we have different people here. You need skill to be able to operate. But when it comes to be a, a fisher of men, a fisher of men, a fisher of men is such a person, you know, that attracts that attract people into the kingdom. We are talking about someone that you, some, someone can see you outside and say, Ma, what is it that is about you? I want to be like you. That does not respond to skill. That responds to something that you carry on the inside. It is the anointing. And we can see for David to be bold enough to say, My own, you shall exalt like that of the unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And we can see the great things that David was able to do. The things that God used him to do. People were running away from Goliath. But because he knew that with his own anointing, not even a giant and uncircumcised Philistine can, can, can contaminate that oil. Tonight we're going to be praying, people of God. When skill failed Peter... The anointing stepped in. I want you to please know, people of God, as we are going into this snow week, as we are continuing in the snow week, that it is not only, yes, blessing, blessing. Oh, yes, I need the miracles. Yes, I need that. But 
We need to be a person of impact. We need to be a man of impact. We need to be a woman of impact. That anywhere we get to, people will know that, yes, there is something about you. I may not be able to lay my hands on it, but I know that you are different from, it, from, from, from every other person. The Bible said that Jesus, he walked with the disciples, and after some time, he sent them forth. He trained them. And before he left... He told them that make sure you wait for the promise of the Father. And the moment the Holy Spirit came, there was immediate result. There was immediate result. The Holy Spirit is that power, is that spirit that, com- that, 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 that converts the heart of men back to God. He brings the word of God to life. Jesus said, he will teach you, he, w- he, said, he, he said, he will teach you all things. It will bring to your remembrance the things that I have told you. It brings the word of God to life. So as we are going in this snow, people of God, please let there be a thirst. Let there, let there be an hunger in us that I, 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 will not be, I will not be the same. I will not be the same. I will not be the same. We come to God. We come to God's presence. We come to church. You say, ah, the Holy Spirit is in that church. I can feel the, I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not enough for you to feel the power of the Holy Spirit, but God wants you to be able to carry his presence with, with you anywhere you go. Because you carry his presence, because you carry his spirit, even when evil is meant to happen, because of you it is suspended. Why? Because there is something on your inside that the enemy cannot, that, that the enemy cannot tamper with. Even if the enemy has put his mark of destruction upon a person and you enter a plane with that person, because you are inside that aircraft, the enemy has to suspend his plan. Why? Because you carry something that is different. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. And fresh oil, it means empowerment. It means anointing. It means power for a new assignment. There is a height that God is taking this church to. But you know something, people of God? We may not get there if we don't begin to see ourselves in that light. God told Abraham. He said, Abraham, he said, can you see? Can you see? He said, as far as you can see, I will be able to. Uh, that, as far as you can see, I will give you. Abra- Abraham also at some point was telling God. He said, God. What I can see right now is that I'm going childless. God said, you need to see that don't you see that I am making you a father of many nations? Your salvation experience, your work with God, the anointing that you have received, it must translate to something. It must translate to something. You keep, we keep coming every time. We are eating and eating and eating and eating. Many, many of us already have spiritual constipation. Why? Because you just keep taking in and there is no outlet. And that is why the devil is not even afraid. When, he, when, you, when you say you are coming to church, he's not going to stop you. Because he knows that after getting everything, you're not going to do anything with it. But remember, Jesus, he took the disciples... He trained them and he sent them out. What testimony do you have? The disciples came. They said, Lord. He said, the demons, even the demons, they were buying to us. They were running out in your, in your name. They were able to do something with what they have learned. In this snow, God is empowering us for us to go out and make impact. Amen. The anointing is so, the anointing that you have received, see, we are using the anointing that we are, we are using the anointing. We are using the power of God, even to be fighting the things that are not relevant. We are making the devil feel so important. The witches and wizard. Whenever it is time to pray, pray against witches and wizard. Every everybody, you will raise your he- your leg. We we'll raise our hands. We we'll jump as if there is no tomorrow. But these are the same powers, the same principalities that. When they see you, they run away from you. Jesus was not jumping when he got to the shore of the gatherings. That, it was that same man, that madman that was filled with demons, 6,000 demons. He came to meet him. He said, he came to surrender. He said, I, I've been fighting everybody in this zone. Everyone that comes here, I make sure I beat them, I destroy them. But you, I came to surrender. Why? Because he was carrying something different. 
And if Jesus will say that, the, the, if Jesus will say that the things that I, the things that I, that, that I did, that you will be able to do much more. It means that God, Jesus, is setting us up for us to be able to do great and mighty things as well. Jesus, he chased out demons. How many demons have, you, have, you, have we chased out? As a matter of fact, the fact that Jesus was able to speak, I don't know how we did it. He was able to speak to 5,000 people without using mic. That's a miracle on its own. What type of preaching was Jesus, what type of teaching was Jesus doing that people came to him and he, and he held them spellbound for three days? And they did not even complain that they were hungry. Jesus was the one that said that, ah, let's give these people food. They were ready to continue. This snow, people of God, it is the snow of power. It is a snow of great encounter with the Holy Spirit. It is the snow that we empower us for great exploit. But what are you going to do with this exploit when you receive it? First John chapter 2, verse 27, he said that this anointing that you have received, you need not that any man should teach you anything. He said, but this same anointing itself will teach you. It abides in you. He said it will teach you. All things, and it's true, and it's no lie. Even as it had, it, it, as it had taught you, you shall abide in him. I read the account of uh, people like Jephthah, like David, like Samuel in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. He said, what more shall I say? Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews eleven thirty-two. He said, what more shall I say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, also of David and Samuel. And the prophet, who through faith subdued kingdoms. The same faith. They subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. They stopped the mouth of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Became valiant in battle. Turned to fly the armies of the aliens. Women, they received their dead raised back to life. They received their dead. As in, someone will die and they will refuse to let the person go. They said, this one must come back. And, it's still, and, it, and it is the same faith. And it's the same Jesus that died. For them and we. So the snow of fresh oil is a snow of power. It is, a, it is God gave us this, 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 this theme for us to be able to press into him. For us to be able to, to, to pursue after him. That God, I need this. God, I am tired of being an ordinary Christian. I'm tired of appearing somewhere and people will not know that a Christian is around. It's not in your dressing. It's not in carrying a very big Bible. It is the presence of God. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. See, there are several things that happen in God's presence that most times we even forget that those things, they happened for a reason. I discovered, people of God, that sometimes God flashes some experiences before us. And the reason he's doing that is because he wants us, he's giving us a direction that if you can press more into me, that this thing that you just experienced will become a daily reality, will become a daily occurrence in our lives. So much encouraged about this, the, the testimony of, of, uh, of, of our sister, sister um, one of our CJ members, Sister Oi, that God revealed to her what was going to happen. So when such things begin to happen once in a while, then, you are, then God is trying to tell you that, do you know that if you press more into me, that this will become something daily. This will become something that you don't even have to sleep before I give you, before I speak to you. There is more than coming to church. There is more 
than singing praise worship. There is more to praying. There is more to hearing God's word. But we need to take that word and act it. We need to put it into action. These healings, great spiritual experiences, some of these things you know that happens, God wants to make it a daily occurrence. You can say that, do you know you, you met someone and the person is going through so many things and you are telling the person that, Ma, do you know that if I pray for you right now, that sickness, that condition is going to go. Say, so how are you so sure? Because I know who I believe. And when you pray with the person, you tell the person, go back right now to the doctor and go and redo that test. And they will go back and you, they will see a different result. Why? Because God, God wants to, God wants to, be, to, to move in you. God wants you to, to carry his presence everywhere you go. Joel, in the book of Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 29, he said, It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also, on my men servant and maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days. These are the days of God's power, people of God. God is doing great and mighty things. Who could, have, who could have believed that in our own days that God will be doing mighty things, raising the dead, healing cancer, and different things happening left, right, and sent, uh, you know, just happening everywhere. But what we need to do is to be able to position ourselves. And how do we position ourselves? We are in line already. We just need to position ourselves prophetically. The Bible mentioned that these are the days. It said in the last days, this is the last days. It shall come to pass. Afterward, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Not some flesh. So God wants to pour his spirit on you. God wants to turn your life around. He wants to transform people through you. When you see the work of darkness overcoming, you know, the things of God, it means that Christians are sleeping. Because the works of darkness can never overpower the works of God. Amen. There are great miracles that happened in the past. And upon these, upon these you know, miracles were great ministries built. There are people that have gone to be with God in glory. People like, um, uh, 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 like, like um, Archbishop Idaosa like uh, uh, Apostle Babalola. God used these ones. He used his, his, his ministers for great, for great, 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 great and mighty things. We read about um, Apostle Babalola that he was preaching. And as he was preaching, he was just being, you know, taken up like that. He was just going. And people were like, what's happening? Right in their presence. There was another man of God. I've forgotten his name right now. God told him to enter an elevator. He entered an elevator, and by the time he was coming out, he came out in China. And he preached, he did mighty works. God used him, and I think he entered a restroom or somewhere, just entered the door, and he found himself in his room. So these are people that moved in great powers. And we are in this day. We have the promise, and therefore... We need to hold on to God. We need to pursue. We need to pursue God. So don't be left behind. Tell your neighbor, don't be left behind. We are that generation that the world is waiting for. And if you think that you have seen the manifestation of God's power, I will advise that you position yourself to seek God. Position yourself genuinely to seek God in this snow. And you will see what God is going to do. John chapter 14, verse 12 said, Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. So we can see that the apostles, they operated in diverse working of the Spirit. And God wants to extend this to you and I. But you know something, people of God, there is a price to pay. The Lord has promised to anoint us with fresh oil in this snow. Amen. And you know, fresh oil, it means 
greater works. It means that God is taking us to another level. Because what happened, the moment David was anointed, what happened? He began to do the things that he, that he had not been doing before. And he became a king. So the anointing that you have received is for something. It's not just for you to sit. It's not just for your head, you know, to be, to be, you know, to be soaking with oil. And people will know that, oh, where are you coming from? I don't you know. He's anointing oil. You want some? No, it's more than that. There is an ability in you, people of God, through the Spirit, that will empower you to make decrees. I've seen men, and by God's grace, God has, you know, by God's grace, I've seen that happen in my life as well. That you will make certain decrees, and you will see God doing things, it will be as if it, 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 it's very, very dramatic. Somebody called me, my brother called me sometime when, I, when, we, were in, when um, we were at uh, um, Mountain, Blue Mountain. And there's a business that we do and, uh, with some trucks. So they took some items, they were taking it somewhere, and some people just stopped them. And up from nowhere, they were just asking for maybe about 500,000, say for... for ah, what, who does who does that? You mean you just stop someone, and you are saying that bring this amount? So I was I was like, what is what is this? I was angry in my spirit, and I said, let's pray. They will let you go. And we prayed. And while we were praying, they were calling him that he should not worry that he should just go. There are people that have. That God has so much empowered that they make statements to even inanimate things. Jesus looked at that tree. He was expecting fruit from it and, it was done and nothing was coming from. And he cursed it. And it dried up. That, that was, that's something that you will, you will say it's inanimate. And he said greater things that he wants to do in your life as well. So please, people of God, in this note, let's get ready to seek God. Let's get ready to seek God. You know, Jesus worked in greater anointing than Moses. Why? Because he was able to, he, he, he came to show us God's love. And he also came to show us the way to the Father. Moses could not lead the people of God to, to Canaan. But Jesus is the way that leads to the Father. And we can see also, comparing Jesus with Elijah, you will see that Elijah said, told Elisha that if you can see me, then you will qualify for the power. But when Jesus Christ was ascending, according to the book of Luke chapter 24, about two, 10 to about 13 people, they were there when he was being taken up. And power was released. And Jesus did not leave it at that. Jesus still said, he said that, he said that, that as many as as many people that believed, to them he gave power. John chapter 1 verse 12, he said, But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. He gave them the right. He gave them the enablement. So it is not only in seeing. It is, all, it is in believing. You have the power to become. You have the power to make decrees. You have the power to put the enemy to shame. You have the power and the authority to stop the mouth of lions. You have the power to destroy whatever thing that the enemy is doing. If anybody makes the mistake of telling you what the devil is doing in their life, it is that day that that thing ends. Why? Because you have been empowered to do it. But how many, how many times have people told us that, ah, ma, this, what, what, this is what is happening in my family. Oh. And you're like, ah, it is well, Lord. This day, self. Only God knows what is happening. Ah, this, this devil is really wicked. Why, why are you sympathizing with them? Why can't you stop what the devil is doing? This is the snow of fresh oil. This is the snow of divine empowerment. This is the snow that God he wants to use to empower his church. Amen. We were praying on Sunday, yesterday, you know, about the Holy Spirit coming down. And uh, 3,000 people coming into the church. All they heard they, was just sound. 
They were speaking in tongues. And God was bringing the people from everywhere. And out of everybody that gathered, 3,000 people joined the church that day. We're going to be praying, people of God. We're going to be praying. Father, thank you. The secret to working in the power of the Holy Spirit is knowing how to create an atmosphere. Create an atmosphere for him. Working in the anointing, it means knowing how to host the presence of God. See, visitation is good though, but hosting is better. We can, we can visit and leave, but hosting, you know how to host him. We're going to be praying tonight. Let's, stand, let's rise on our feet because of our, because of our time. We are going to be praying. We're going to be praying. We're going to be praying. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. I want you to be expectant, people of God, because in this snow, if you will press into God, if you will pursue after him, he will release his power. He will release his grace. He will release his anointing for you to make impact. Let it be that because of the anointing, because of the presence, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, we are getting things done. You see, the anointing, the anointing is a, is, is a shortcut, really, of getting, you know, because it's, the anointing is a shortcut of getting things done. Because what you, what you will have done with your strength, for example, look at Peter. He toyed all night. He did not catch anything. But when the anointing stepped in, things happened. We're going to be praying. Say, blood of Jesus avail for me today. Blood of Jesus speak for me. Fight for me. Defend me in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray in the precious name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus avail for me. Avail for me. Avail for me in the precious name of Jesus. Avail for me in the precious name of Jesus. Fight for me. Defend me. Me profasa ta yipre ke mandari bre ke pu zoto yevre ve ke menderi bra kabasa. Ze fre ke puto son ko yepre ke pu zoto yepre ke menderi bre ke menze te libri kaba. Man pra kapo zoto yepre ke menderi bra kapo zoto sheke yekre ke desa. Ze fre be ke pu zoto yepre ke menderi bra kaba zata yekre ke desa. Za fre meni re bra kapo zoto yepre ke mandari bre ke pu zoto libri ke bia. For in Jesus precious name we are praying. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. I tell you, people of God, it is good to pray for blessing. It is good to pray for, you know, different things, you know, to come. But when you receive power, all those things will come. And I'll be now with, will, will attest to this. You know, there's a man of God that will follow. Because he worked with power. Because he pursued God. People were coming to him. Somebody came and he brought jet. And he said, sir, please take this jet. And he looked at it and he said, no, that he does not want it. The things that other people are pursuing, they will pursue you when you pursue God, when you go after the anointing. One of our fathers in the Lord, Pastor Adeboye of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, in every city, in every place, everywhere he goes, whenever he's traveling, he does not go with he doesn't go with money, because money is waiting for him. People that know him, people that don't know him, they just put money in the account. Why? Because he is pursuing God, and these are the things that people are even killing themselves over. They are killing themselves over money killing themselves over different things, fighting over different things. When you pursue God, the things that others are pursuing will begin to pursue you. We're going to be praying. The Bible records, the Bible recorded how Jesus chose his disciples. The disciples that later became, yes, apostles. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 through to 20, you will see that Andrew, Peter, James, and John, he called them, you know, the same way they were, they were mending, uh, they were in the boat, and Jesus called them. 
Bible said in verse 21, it said going from Matthew 4, 21, it said going on from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and, his, and John, his brother, in the boat with their father, mending nets. He called them, and immediately they left the, the boat and their father and followed him. How about Philip and Nathaniel? The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, verse 43, it said that Jesus, he found Philip. And Philip now looked for Nathaniel and he said, Nathaniel, we found the master. Oh, yeah, come. And he came and Jesus told him and he said, uh, Nathaniel, he said, he said um, uh, behold an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathaniel said, said to him, how do you know him? He said, when you were under the tree, the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathaniel said, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. How did he call Matthew? The Bible said, Jesus, he was passing by from there. And he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he looked at him and he said, follow me. And he arose and he followed him. Now, the way all of this happened, it was as if that there are some people that heaven had already chosen. That Jesus, when he, when he, when he saw them, he knew that this one, this one, this one. There were so many boats that Jesus passed, but he, he stopped at the boat of Peter and Andrew, James, uh, uh, James and John, and he called them. How can you be going in an office and see somebody and say, you follow me? And the man followed him. And God used him for mighty works. There are so many people that God will pass by just to get to some people to anoint them. Why don't we be that person? Why, why, why don't we, what is that thing that is qualifying, that is disqualifying us from that anointing, from, from being God's choice? We want to pray, people of God. God may be looking for who to pour fresh oil on. And the council of heaven can just come to someone and say, oh, no. And God will say, no, 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 no. Forget about that person. They did not do that for, is it Eliab now? God told Samuel, said, forget him. He said, I have rejected him. You want to pray that, Father, whatever will disqualify me from receiving fresh oil, from receiving the anointing in this snow, Father, remove it from me. David said, oh God, he said, look at me. He said, search me. Search my heart. Search my heart. And see if there is any wicked thing in me. What he's saying is that, God, I don't want to be disqualified from your move. I don't want to be disqualified from, from the anointing. When you are looking for people to bless, when you are looking for people to pour your oil on, Lord, whatever thing that may be in me that may want to disqualify me, Lord, Please take it out of me. Search me. I don't want to be disqualified. Let's pray in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that whatever will disqualify us from receiving fresh oil, from receiving the anointing in this snow, Father, we pray that you remove it from us in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, remove it from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Me brupa zanta di breke po zoto yi breke man tari brakaboso. Ze creke to soto sheke ye greke manta ye breke monto. Za praka po soto ye preke peto ri breke men zete ri breke yarababa. Father, whatever, Lord, whatever, whatever, we disqualify us. Father, from this new level, in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask that you remove it from us in the precious name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In Luke chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible said that Jesus was teaching the Pharisees, the teachers, the teachers of the law, they were sitting. But one of the things that really caught my attention here was that I drew my attention to this passage was that the Bible said that the power of the Lord was present to heal. It said the power of the Lord was present to heal them. That means that there are meetings that the power of God will be conspicuously absent. There are meetings that some people will go to. You may even travel to those meetings. And you will not receive nothing. Why? Because the power of God was not there. Because the Bible said that the power of God was present. If it was possible for the power of God to be present, then it's also possible for the power of God to be absent. 
We're going to be praying. And you know something? As a minister of God, when the power of God is present, when you know that the power of God is present, like right now I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit moving all around me. When you know that the power of God is present, you can dare anything. When you know that the power of God is present, it's just like you going to a place, you praying for someone and you can feel that the power of God is just moving in your hands. Then you know that healing is flowing from you. You are receiving from God and that healing is flowing from you to the person that you are praying for. You know that such a person will receive instant healing when you feel such move. We're going to be praying, people of God. When Jesus knew that the power of God was, was, was present in that verse 18 and 19, all of a sudden, Jesus just saw that some people were removing the roof and they were bringing down a man that was paralyzed. Of course, he didn't say that, oh, no, 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 not today. Let's do it another time. He knew the power of God was present. He allowed them to bring the man down. And that man himself was the one that picked up all those things by himself, picked up his bags, his bed, and he walked out of that place. Why? Because the power of God was there. You want to pray. This is the anointing. See, people of God, the anointing is God's energy to accomplish what human strength cannot accomplish. The anointing is God's empowerment. The anointing is God's ability. We, you need, we need to be able to move away from our own ability and begin to walk in God's ability. That whenever you are singing as a member of the choir, you are not just singing because you have the voice. You are not just singing because you know how to do certain things. Whatever thing you are ushering, you are not ushering because you have been experienced in it. You are doing it. You've been doing it for 10 years. You are doing it because of the anointing. You know that anyone I speak to today, anyone I touch today, they get miracles. Say, Father, Father release, on me release on me the anointing the that will make me walk in all the possibilities of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we pray tonight that you release upon us the anointing that will make us to walk. That will make me walk in all the possibilities of God. The Bible says with you, O oh Lord, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Father, I want to walk in all your possibilities. Everything that you can do. Baba makasi ke potori preke mantari preke buso zefi ke menteri braka basa kashen ke debaro bre puso to yi preke manto ru braka basa tari preke be vreke manson to yi preke manto ro braka ba Father Lord is release upon us the anointing that will make us walk in all your possibilities in the precious name of Jesus zekri manta santa yi preke poso to yi preke petari braka ba. Maka pasoto yi preke peke tari preke bia daba bre posoto yi preke menteri braka bosoto yi preke be ze freke posoto yi preke manta re preke boso ze krike te sete yi preke ya daba vra mosoto yi preke puso tori preke bo bra posoto ria for in Jesus precious name we are praying that Hebrews chapter eleven it talks about women receiving their dead to life. He talked about men stopping the mouth of lions. See, I wonder the type of, the type of, uh, I wonder the type of faith Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. There was no precedent, people of God. They said that if we die, we die. We know that our God is able to save us. He's able to deliver us. But if we die, we die. And by the time they entered, the fire was only able to burn what they were tied with. Think about it, people of God. If you carry God's fire on your inside, is it human fire that will be able to consume you? The fire of God in you neutralizes every human fire. You want to pray, people of God. I was saying earlier about, you know, men of God. There was a particular man that laid hands on someone. And when that person got home, Removed the address. They found the imprint of the man, of the, of the, of, of the servant of God. The, the imprint of that man was on their skin. Somebody came also with an alligator skin. Some, you know, the, the, the demonic, you know, the devil, the devil is just, 
The devil is just, you know, crazy. Inflicting somebody with alligator skin. And they came to that meeting and the man of God peeled out that skin. As in peeled it out. And a new skin emerged. We need to press into God. There are so many there are, there, there, there are so many abilities in God that if only we can press it, press it into him, you may not really... And that is... And I really don't blame why people come to church sometime and they probably act in a certain way. When you act in a certain way, you know, you know that, oh, that maybe the understanding of God is limited. If you know who God is, you're not going to, we, we, we will give God reference. The minister of God does not have to tell us to switch off our phones when we come to God. Your phone does not even have to ring. It is something that everybody should know. When you are in God's presence, what is more important than the presence of God? We're going to be praying, people of God. We read about a man, E.W. Kenyon, that he would, in his church, he would not allow anybody to die until they are 70. If, you, if he heard that somebody died and he's not 70, he said, no, go and bring him. He's not ready. But when he's 70, okay, let him go. Yeah, that's what, yeah, don't worry. Just, just let the person go. We're going to be praying, people of God. What confidence did David had when he said, he said, this day, he said, God will deliver me, you into my hand. What, what, what type of confidence? This boy was only 17, 17 years old. And he was talking to a giant for goodness sake. So you know very well that when somebody carries the anointing, it is not in age. The person may even be four year old, people of God. If he carries the anointing, that, such, a, such a one is older than a 150 year old. Because the anointing is nobody's egg mate. We're going to be praying, people of God. And what brings it into reality is, is the fellowship with the Father. When you get used to God's presence and God rubs himself on you, you begin to walk in greater things. Greater power. You know, the Bible talked about Enoch. He said that he was walking with God. He was walking with God and walking with God. And God so much enjoys fellowshipping with, with men also. And one of, these, one of those days, God was just like, okay, let's go. And they were going, they were walking. And God was just like, he just walked into eternity like that. Why? Because he walked with God. He did not see corruption. There are so many benefits in walking with God. So people of God in this know, be, be prepared, be ready. Give it whatever thing is going to take. To press into God. You want to say, Father, Father give me the grace in this snow in to this press day. into you, to pursue, to follow after you until I find you. Father, take me to a higher grace in anointing and in my work with you in Jesus' name. Let's pray in the mighty name of you. Take me higher. Take me higher in grace, oh Father. Take me higher in anointing. Take me higher in my work with you. Father, as I press, with, as I press, as I press into you in this snow, as I pursue you, as I follow after you, in the precious name of Jesus, Father, take me higher in you. Take me higher. May take me higher, Lord. Ma prebo soto li breke manta li breke buzo to yi breke bete ze freke po soto yi breke buzo to yi kreke debe ma kata sata yi breke po soto yi breke buzo to yi My Father, my Father. Take me higher in you, Jesus. Father, take me higher in you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. In the book of Exodus chapter 33, I want to request for the audiovisual to please help send uh, the prayer points to, 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 uh, to, every, to every one of us. Now, Exodus chapter 33, David, uh, Moses said, he said, now therefore, I pray, if I found grace in your sight, show me your way. Uh -uh. 
Show me your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. Moses was interested in walking in the ways of God because he knew that there is no way you will walk in the way of God and you are going to miss it. And in verse 20, he said, he told God, he said, God, I want to know you. I want to see you. And what happened? And God told him, he said, you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live. And this is a true statement. It is only dead people that sees God. And what do I mean? I mean people that are dead to sin. People that are dead to the flesh. People that are dead to the, the, to the, to the common things that befalls a man. If you want to see God, then you have to be dead to the things that... To be, you, have to be dead to, you have to be dead to sin. You can't be saying that, oh, uh, what is bad in this? What is bad in that? You are not ready to see God. God told Moses, he said, if you want to see me, then you have to let go of some things. You have to let go of things. You have to be dead to sin. You have to overcome temptation. You have to be, you have to be able to overcome, overcome things. Things that are common to man should not be the same thing that is bringing you down. Therefore, you want to pray, people of God. You want to say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. help me to conquer flesh. Help me to conquer the pride of man. The deceitfulness of the flesh and all the things that does not work the righteousness of God. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Holy Spirit, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me to conquer flesh in the name of Jesus. Help me to conquer flesh. Help me to conquer everything that does not work the righteousness of God. In the precious name of Jesus. The Bible says, do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Father, I want your love to be in me. Lord, help me to be dead to sin, to be dead. Lord, oh Lord, to temptations, even to things that brings down men. My Lord and oh my God, help me to conquer flesh. Help me to be victorious in the precious name of Jesus. Give me victory in the precious name of Jesus. Give me victory in the precious name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It, it says, how God, how God, how God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. See, my question is that, okay, how did God... How did God anoint Jesus of Nazareth? How? 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 But you see, the book of first, the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 35 explains it. He said, he said, the angel said to her, said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That is how. And the power of the, of the highest, the power of the most high will overshadow you. And therefore, the thing, the Holy One who is therefore also that only one who is to be born will be called the Son of God. What does that mean? It means that when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, it means that when the power of the Most High is overshadowing you, when these two are accomplished, whatever proceeds from you is holy. Whatever proceeds from you, because when you are talking about, you know, we've been told, our pastor told us that whenever you see a shadow, it means that the person casting that shadow is nearby. So when you are under the shadow of the Most High, and when the Holy Spirit is upon you, people of God, that is the right time for you to decree things and you begin to see it manifesting. If you are overshadowed by the power of the Most High, it means that you are in the atmosphere of possibilities. It means that you are in the presence of the Most High. Therefore, you want to pray that Holy Spirit fall afresh on me. Power of the Most High overshadow me. Father, anoint me for great exploit. Go ahead and begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That was, how, uh, that was how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. Oh, my God. 
Now pour salt on it, break it, break it, break it, break it, put salt on it. Father, oh Lord, Zekri ke na salt on it, break it, put salt on it, break it, break it. Makanta sata yi preke puso to yi preke puso to ria Zepro pasata yi preke bo Holy Spirit Fall afresh Fall afresh on me Fall of the most high Overshadow me in the name of Jesus Father Anoint me for great exploit In the name of Jesus Zima no koso to yi preke puso to yi preke pata yi preke bo Zepreke pasata yi preke poto yi ki edebe zepeteria for in Jesus' precious name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1, it said, Dead fly, it brings about, it causes a decay. It causes, it destroys, it contaminates the perfumer's oil. And it causes it to give a foul odor. We're going to be praying, people of God. If you read the book of Exodus chapter 30 verse, uh, verse 22 to 33, you will see that that perfumer's oil is the same thing as the anointing oil. And God said in verse 25, he said, you shall, you shall make from this the holy anointing oil, an ointment compounded according to the act of the perfumer, and it shall be a holy anointing oil. Now, verse 32 says, it shall not be poured on the man's flesh, nor shall you make any other like it according to his composition. It is holy. And it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds anything like it or whoever puts any of it on an outsider shall be cut off from his people. So you can see how holy this oil is. But you know what the, well, you know what the scripture says? That this same oil, whenever a fly gets into it, it contaminates it. It does what? It contaminates it. And you know that the devil is called Beelzebub, right? That is the prince of flies. So no matter the anointing that you think you have, once he's able to step in, it contaminates it. So God is ready to pour out himself to us in this snow. But what, but what God is going to be pouring into us, we don't want it contaminated. So therefore, we want to pray. Let's pray ahead of time now and say, God, Father, every effort and the plan of the devil to drain or contaminate your grace and your anointing upon my life. Father, frustrate it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, there are men of God that God has anointed. And the devil just comes in and he deflates them. Maybe he brings about, maybe, you know, a strange woman. Or maybe it brings about lustful desires. And before you know it, every anointing is deflated. So the devil is always using, is always looking for opportunities to contaminate that. And no matter how anointed the man is, once you hear that something happens in the area of women, everybody loses interest, they lose, they lose respect, they lose different things. You can see what the devil does. In the area of women, the area of money, the area of abuse of power, and different things. You're going to be praying. Lord, every effort and plan of the devil to drain or contaminate your grace and anointing upon my life. Lord, frustrate them in the name of Jesus. Let's pray in the precious name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, devil. Zemenere breke bozoto ye breke bozoto ye breke menderi breke bo bra basoto ye breke bozoto ye breke bozoto le breke bozoto le breke bo re fre peto zoto ye breke menzate ye breke bozoto ye breke bo makaba zata ya breke bozoto le breke bozoto ye breke bozoto le breke be ma poto zoto ye breke bozoto le breke bozoto le breke be zate le breke boz for in Jesus precious name we are praying because of our time let's jump to number nine. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 47, you will see people of God. He says, I'll read it quickly. He said, then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And there was water flowing from under the threshold of the, of the temple towards the east. For the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and he led me around the other side uh, to the outer gate that faces east. And there was water running 
out on the right side. Please remember that the water was flowing from, from, from the temple, right? And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and the water came to my knees, to my ankle, ankles. And again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters and the water came to my knees. And again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through and the water came to my waist. And again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that could not cross. For the water was too deep. Water in which one could swim. And a river that could not be crossed. And he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me back to the bank of the river. If I were to be Ezekiel, I won't come back. Oh. <laughs> you brought you from, from the anointing, from the, from the ankle, to the knees, to the waist, to the point that you are now over, overwhelmed by the anointing and it's bringing you back. See, there is an experience that is deeper than the one that you have experienced. I don't know whether you, I don't know how much, how, how deep you have, you have, you've experienced God before. But there is still an experience that is deeper than the ones that you have experienced. And that's why we, we need to keep pressing. You see, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. He says, but earnestly desire the best gift. What gift do you want? What gift do you want? Earnestly desire the best gift. Right? But look at what the... Just look at what the next line says. He says, and yet I will show you a more excellent way. Meaning that after you have, uh, as in after you have attained the best of the best, there is still a more excellent way. There is, there is still more that we can press in into God. And therefore we want to pray, people of God. We know that Jesus is the son of God. But why does Jesus have to pray all night? Why does he have to wake up in the morning? As his, as his custom, the Bible says it, as his custom was, every morning he prays, very early in the morning. We're going to be praying, people of God. God told, God, God said in um, Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, he says, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as the man speaks to his friend. That's a level. That's a height. want to pray that father like never before take me beyond the experiences that man has ever encountered with you fill me up lord let's pray let's pray let's pray father makaposo tori pray mano sokosi ki he teri brakaba ken ketari brakapu shonto yi preke puso to yi preke yadaba Breke posoto yi breke mantari breke futo totoru brokomoso. Father, like never before, take me beyond, beyond the experiences that man had ever experienced and ever encountered you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, take me deeper, 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 Lord. Take me deeper, Father, Lord God, embrace me, O Lord, in the place of your presence, Lord. Makapusoto de bederi braka pasata yi breke mantari breke boso. Zefete teri breke mantari breke pusoto yi breke mandari breke buso. Zekriena sanda yi breke pusoto yi breke peze teri braka bata zanda. Maboto soto yi breke pusoto ya. For in Jesus' precious name we are praying. Because of our time, we still have, um, I think we have about two more prayers, but I want us to pray one because of our time. And we're going to be having it in our emails. I want us to pray. I read the experience of a man who God used to relate with. But that experience became history. I'm talking about Job. In the book of Job chapter 29. This man, he began to recount the blessedness of that experience. He was like, wow. From verse 1. He said, then Job further continued his discourse and said, hmm. Oh, that I were in, in, in the months past, as in the days when God watched over me. He was recounting. And for him to be recounting, it means that he was no longer experiencing that again. 
He said, I wish I can go back to those times, to that time when, when, when God was watching over me. When his lamp shone on my head. When by his light I walked through darkness. I hope you're understanding these words, people of God. He said, by God's light, I, I, I could walk through the thickest of darkness. Just as I was in the days of my, of, my, of my prime, when the friendly counsel of God was over my tent, I don't need to be knocking the, the, the to be going, to be traveling to places, to be looking for ideas, to be looking for, you know, uh, 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 um, interventions. He said the counsel of God was on my tent. Everything was in-house. God was with me. Everything I needed, it was everything I need, and I... I, I I could get, I got more than what I needed. He said, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were around me, when my, 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 my steps were bathed with cream, and the rock poured out rivers of oil for me, when I went out to the gate, when I took my seat in the open square, the men saw me and hid. The aged arose and stood. The princes refrained from talking. And they put their hand on their mouth. The voices of nobles were hushed. And their tongue stick to the roof of their mouth. When they hear, heard, it blessed me. And, the high, and when the eye saw, it approved of me. See, the experience of Job, the experience Job had, should not have, should not have tampered with his, his fellowship, his relationship with God. But when the devil struck, Job had the time to be asking questions, but he forgot about the fellowship. You want to pray, people of God, that Father, let not my relationship with you, let not my fellowship with you, your work and your anointing in me become history in the name of Jesus. Let me not be a castaway. Job said, I wish I could go back to those periods, to those times when God was watching over me. When his counsel was on my tent, he was experienced, he was thinking about it. He said, those were happy moments. You don't want to trade the presence of God for something. See, there is a level that you will experience God that, you see, for, 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 for some of us, let me say this. Thank God for your Thank God for your, uh, thank God for, uh, you know, a wonderful, a wonderful family. Thank God for, for uh, wonderful people. See, but there are some experiences, there are some things that you will experience with God that will not make you to even tamper because you know that whatever thing that you put your hands in sin could tamper with that experience. And you cannot trade it for anything. You cannot trade it for anything. No matter what it is, you, you cannot trade it for anything. Therefore, you want to pray that, Father, let not my relationship with you, let not my fellowship with you, let not my work with you, let not my anointing with you, Father, become history in the name of Jesus. Let's pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray. Let it not become mystery in the mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for the spirit of prayer. Thank you for your desire for us of change. Thank you for your desire for the snow. We'll receive everything in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for your servant. We pray for more of your grace upon his life in Jesus' name. Amen. As he has blessed us tonight, bless him in return in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be more revelation and knowledge in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the heavens continue to be opened upon him in Jesus' name. Amen. He has refreshed us and blessed us. We pray that you refresh and bless him. Amen. Surround him with songs of deliverance. Amen. Surround his family with songs of deliverance. Amen. And let his way also be prosperous. Amen. Together we shall all make it. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. You may be seated. Are, are we blessed tonight? I know I was. Let, let's give the Lord a hand and let's appreciate the servant of God. It's